Welcome to part two of the Easy Peasy Drawstring Bag. For this step, you are going to need your two casing pieces, two loop squares, a seam gauge, an iron, and an ironing board. First thing I'm going to do is I want to take my casing pieces. Mine are a little bit wrinkly, so we're just going to go ahead and give them a good iron so that they're nice and flat and not causing us any problems. Next thing I want to want to do is we're going to talk about your seam gauge. So your seam gauge is this little ruler. We want to set it to a fourth of an inch because that's what we want to turn our casing to. So I'm going to push my slider to a fourth of an inch. On our seam gauges, that is the second line or it's the line past the circle. The next thing we need to talk about is fabric. So fabric has a right and a wrong side. So the right side is the pretty side. It's the side that you want to see when everything is done. And then they have the wrong side, or sometimes I'll refer to it as the ugly side. And it's the side without the print on it. For this case, what we want to do is we want to take with the ugly side towards us, we're going to fold this top piece down so the pretty side's up about a fourth of an inch. And then I'm going to take my seam gauge and I'm going to measure. So I looked out and got it right this time and so I'm at a fourth of an inch. Next thing I do so that I don't get burned is I put, I make the P sign and I put one finger on one corner, one on the other corner. I then take my iron, put it between my fingers, and I move my iron until the entire thing's covered. I typically hold this for five seconds. Once I'm there, I lift it up. Mine didn't quite stay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press it a little bit longer. So I just do the five, four, three, two, one, maybe give it a little wiggle, lift it up. Even though he's not staying perfectly flat, he's enough down that I can tell that's where I want him to be. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna flip it down. And if I happen to push it too far down and I take my seam gauge and I'm like, oh wow, that's like almost double the amount. I just simply push it back with my fingers. So I just roll it back and then I remeasure. I'm still a tiny bit big, so we're just gonna shift it a little bit and looks like I've got it now. Same thing, finger on either corner, iron to the middle, and then I just hold it for those five seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. See, that's what I was looking for on the other side. I don't know why I didn't do it. So now I've got this one done. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the loop squares. So for my loop square this time, I have a pattern. So I have to decide, do I want when I'm all done, do I want to see something like this? Or do I want to see something like this? I think I want to see the pattern going a little bit different. So I'm going to fold it this way. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold them in half. And I'm going to iron them flat. And so same thing, I hold it for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And this part on the pattern can be a little bit confusing for some people. What it's talking about next is it wants you to open it up. So we still have that crease down the middle. And then I'm going to take one side. Oops, it's kind of trying to fold to me. And I'm going to fold it to that crease I just made in the middle. So essentially, I'm folding my half and a half. Oops, it moved. So I just go and reposition myself. I put my finger about an inch away. That way I can just barely get the iron on it. And then I can move my fingers out of the way. Same thing, I'm going to hold it for those five seconds. This is what it's doing is by the end of this, I will have this folded in fourths. Okay, so I got the one side, so we're going to lift him up. And then we're going to fold the other one, same thing, pulled it to that half piece. And then I'm going to iron, ooh, I think, I, I think it moved on me. Let's try that again. There we go. Something to take note of when I'm doing this is I'm trying really hard not to iron that middle piece. Because if I iron that middle piece, it's going to make it flat, and I don't want it flat. So I'm going to lift them up, then I'm going to fold it all. So fold them in half, fold them in half one last time. So now I'm back to being in half, in four, so whatever you want to look at it. And for this last one, I put my weight on it, I lean on it, and I might even hold it a little bit longer than five seconds. Because I want this one to stay good and flat. So with that, I have my loop score done. I'm going to leave you to do the other loop score and the second casing. Okay, 
First thing we're going to want to make sure we do is make sure that our machine is started. My machine is currently already started with white thread. Next thing I want to do is I want to make sure I check all my knobs. First knob I check is my stitch width knob. I want to make sure it's set to zero because I don't want my stitches going back and forth. Next thing I want to do is I want to mess with my needle position knob. Typically it should be straight up and down, but for what we're going to do, I want to take it and I want to turn it all the way to the far right. Lastly, we're going to check our needle pos our stitch length and we want to make sure it's between 2 and 3. I'm a little low, so I'm just going to turn it a tiny bit to get it between that magic 2 and 3 number. For this next part, I'm going to want both my casings, both of my loop squares, and I'm also going to want just a pair of scissors just to clip my thread, and then I got myself a mug just to throw my tails into. First thing we're going to need to do is already set our machine. We're going to go ahead and turn it on. And I'm going to start with my casing pieces. So we're going to do what is called a top stitch. So how we have it set up, we're already set for success. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my orange piece under, and I'm going to just lower my presser foot, not all the way, I'm still holding it, because I want my fabric to be lined up right here on the edge. And I'm going to line them up. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both my tails. Oh, if I can find them, they're running away. And then holding my tails, I'm going to lift my back stitch. And I'm going to let it back stitch until it drives off. So now I'm off, so I can let go of my tails. And then I'm just going to hold on to this piece up here, making sure that it stays in line at the edge of my foot. And just let it go straight across. And then, oop, I'm at the end. I'm going to stop lift my back stitch and I want it to go three times so I'm gonna watch one, oh, it goes my machine's going kind of fast there there we go now when I'm done I'm gonna turn my handle remember we always turn it towards us until he's all the way at the top then I'm gonna lift my presser foot pull him out and then with my scissors I'm gonna pull it until I'm at least to the edge of my machine trim them off and then so I don't forget the other ones I'm gonna go ahead and trim off these two right now and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So once again, make sure my tails are on the right, slide them under, gently lower my presser foot so I'm starting on my fabric, lined up on the edge, holding my tails, going to back stitch till I, oops, I forgot to hold the back stitch lever. Hold the back stitch lever until you're off, and then you're going to drive straight to the end, keeping it on that side of your presser foot. So when I get to the end, I can stop, back stitch three, one, two, three, lift it till my take-up lever till it's at the top, lift my presser foot, and I'm going to go ahead and trim off my tails on both sides. So now I have this casing is done. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the loop square. So the loop square is the same, except for we're going to do it on both sides, and I'm already looking at the nice side. So we're going to go ahead, slide it under. Hold my tails, and this time I'm going to remember to back stitch first. So lift my back stitch lever, go until he's off, let him go. Just holding that edge piece, keeping it on the edge of my foot until I get to my end. Back stitch, take up lever to the top. The biggest thing I think is sometimes we try to go too fast for what we're ready for. So pick the speed you're going. I think my, this machine's going a little bit too fast for even me. But it is what it is. I can't really stop the machine, so I'm making it work. But for these ones, always just keep it lined up right there on the edge of your foot. So we're going to go ahead, hold our tails, back stitch, and then I'm going to come up here, hold the front, and just holding it, leaving it lined up. If I find at one point that I'm going a little ski womp or I'm seeing orange on this side of the foot, I know I've gone too far to the one side. But instead of just lifting up my foot, I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to gently move it until I'm lined up again. Go to the end, back stitch, lift it up, trim both sides of the tails. If you always trim both sides of the tail every time you're done, you're not going to have any problem with there being tails at the end. So this is what your loop square will look like when it's done and your casing will look very similar. My thread matches right in so you can't really see it. So that's what I'm going to have you do. Go ahead and do the other two yourself. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, I zoomed in, whoops, keep kicking the stand, so that you can see how I'm lining the fabric up on the edge. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do our loop square again. So first thing is I push him under, and then I just have it right there on my edge, holding my tails, lifting the back stitch, going until I'm off, and then holding that end piece, and just keeping it nice and close on the edge of that foot. That's our goal. When I get to the end, I back stitch, and then I've got it, and then I'm done. But remember, it needs to be on the edge of your foot.